There we go. So I'm going over variables and expressions in this session. And then I did send out an email and there's an announcement with live sessions from the June term for the um, other texts that I will be unable to go over because I'll be out of town. So um, those will all be available, but this one I knew I could do live, so I, that's why I didn't provide a link to this one. Okay, so we're going to start with definitions here. So um, variables. So algebra involves studying relationships between unknown quantities. So what we did in week one was arithmetic. We're just subtracting, doing all that stuff, and you just have numbers. When you start throwing in things that are unknown, values you don't know what they what number they are, that's where we call it algebra. And those things that are unknown, they could be they could change or vary, which is how we get the name variables. So uh, we often use letters, X is the most common one to indicate some value we don't know. And we could plug in numbers for X and you can replace it with a number and you can replace it with multiple numbers, which is why it's called a variable as well, because you can, it can be different numbers inside there. So uh, we often use letters for those unknown qualities. The most common that we use, my C didn't get there. So the most common ones are X, Y, and Z, or A, B, and C. Um, okay, I'm just going to move my tablet so I'm writing flat so it doesn't look so funny. There we go. Uh, we also can use grid letters, and that's usually used in more advanced math. So if you have to go on to like pre-calculus or calculus, that's usually where you'll see um, Greek letters. And so an example of one is rho. Um, that usually stands for density. There's um, gamma. There's a whole bunch of different Greek letters. When you go actually in statistics, you'll use Greek letters. So you'll see sigma. That's a Greek letter, and that's just in statistics. But um, we generally use the Roman alphabet, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And we usually go in numerical order or alphabetical order. And there are certain letters we avoid. We avoid the letter L as a lowercase um, because it looks like a one. We avoid O because that looks like a zero. We avoid S because that could look like a five, although sometimes you will see S. Um, if it's typed, it's usually okay. You can tell the difference. But handwritten, it's very difficult to tell the difference between an S and a five usually. So there are certain letters that you avoid just so things don't get confusing. An expression is a collection of variables and constants under algebraic expressions or algebraic operations. So everything that we did with the order of operations, those are operations. Algebraic operations just means that we're involving variables when we do those. So there may be exponents on the variables or we may be adding things with variables or subtracting things with variables, that sort of thing. And so an expression has you know, is a combination basically of letters and numbers with various arithmetic signs, like plus signs, minus signs, that sort of stuff in between them. Expressions do not have inequality symbols or equal signs. So you're not going to have any of those symbols written when it's an expression. It's only going to have plus, minus, square root, the, the symbols that you use for the order of operations. Things you can do to expressions are either simplify or evaluate. So if it's a simplify or evaluate, that means you are dealing with an expression. Um, so some de definitions here, I've got constants. So because of the, any, the numbers, we call those constants because the numbers themselves don't change. So we have variables and constants. Constants are the things without letters. And then things that have letters are variables. And then term coefficients and again constants. So when you have an expression that involves plus or minus symbols, each part of that is called a term. So I'm 
going to give an example of an expression. 3xy minus 6x squared plus y minus 17. So this is an expression because it has no equal sign, no less than sign, or any of those symbols. So it's an expression. When we look at terms, we usually rewrite every subtraction as adding um, a negative because that's the definition of subtraction. So we can rewrite this as 3xy plus negative 6x squared plus y plus negative 17. And so I'm going to highlight each term. So when you rewrite it that way, the terms are separated by plus signs. And so we have four terms here. Now the number in front of each term is called a coefficient. So it and that's specifically when you have variables. So I'm going to add in the word in front of a variable term versus something that is a constant. So first off, this negative 17, and that is a constant term. And then these are variable terms because they have variables in them. Now the constants are going to be, or the coefficients, I mean, the coefficients are 3, negative 6. What, if there's no number and there's a variable, the coefficient is 1. So we've got three coefficients there. So the coefficients are in green. So we have 3, negative 6, and 1. So we've got four terms, three variable terms with three coefficients, and then one constant term. Are there any questions so far? So far, so good. Perfect. All right. Like terms. So you can, instead of thinking like, you can think of this as similar terms. That's what we mean by like. They are similar. And so when terms have the same variables, and you have to have the same exponents on the variables. So they have to match with the variables and the exponents. Those are called like terms. When we are simplifying expressions, you combine like terms, which means you're adding or subtracting them. And when you do this, you don't do anything to the variables. They just hang out. So I have an example here, 3xy minus 6x squared y plus xy minus 17y. So this is very similar to the previous example. I just threw in a couple extra variables there. So I'm going to highlight the like terms. And that would be 3xy and xy. Those are like terms because they, oops, not the highlighter. These are like terms they both have x and they both have y and both the x and the y have no exponents so they match. The x squared y is not a like term with xy because one has an exponent of 2 and the other one doesn't on the x so those don't look the same. And then the 17y those don't match with anything because 
the other things all have x's. So they have to have the same variables with the same exponents to be considered like terms. And then if we were to simplify, you would add those things together. So that would be a 3xy plus xy, and those would combine to a 4xy. As you would see that you have a 1, we call that an implied 1, um, just like we have implied multiplication. If there's if you don't know how to add something, basically throw in a 1, you're usually safe. So that would be 3 plus 1, so you'd end up with 4xy when you um, combine like terms. Actually, before we move on, do you have questions about like terms? Okay. Now, evaluating expressions. So the word evaluate means that you need to find the answer using the order of operations. So when you evaluate, you, you will get a number as your answer in the very end. Um, oh, I, my, my slides got somehow messed up because I have the directions for simplifying in the evaluate spot. That is really strange. Okay, I am quickly going to fix my slides because otherwise I'm going to be writing all over this. I'm going to just stop sharing why I fixed my slides. I don't know how I did that. Um, I guess I must have copied and pasted the wrong thing in the wrong spot. Okay, I want to make sure you guys have the correct stuff in the right spot. Okay. Okay, now that I fixed that, I'll share my screen again so that we have the correct directions up there. That would be very helpful. Okay, there we go, the, the correct <laughs> directions with the correct thing. So evaluate expressions. So evaluate means find the answer using the order operations. So you cannot evaluate unless you were in a number to replace with the, vari the a variable with numbers to plug in or to replace the variable with a number. So you're gonna plug in the values, that's our word for replacing the letter with the number. So I should say that, oops. Re the letters with numbers. And then once you've done that, you follow the order of operations. So it's like what we did with the order of operations in week one. We're now just adding an extra step going forward from there. So I've got three different examples here. So it says evaluate the following expressions for x equals negative 8 y equals 4, z equals negative 1. So they're telling us what numbers to replace x, y, and z with. So I'm going to color code with my highlighter. So x is going to be yellow. So that means everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with negative 8. So I'm going to just highlight all of my x's with that. And then to make y green. So everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it with 4. And then, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but we'll try blue for z. And so then you rip your z with blue. So I have three expressions here. So the first one is x minus the square root of y. So generally, the best thing to do is to, if you ever have a negative that you are replacing a number with, use parentheses. So x is negative because it's negative 8. So I'm going to put parentheses negative 8 instead of x minus square root. And then inside the square root is y. 
but y is equal to 4, so I'm going to replace that with 4. So again, x, oops, wrong color there. The y is 4, so now where y is, I'm now replacing it with 4. And then the x is negative 8, so where x was, I'm now replacing it with negative 8. Now from here, you follow the order of operations. So I saw, let's see, I'm going to write it like this so that you can see that multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction are sort of at the same level. So we, parentheses, um, inside the parentheses we have is just negative 8. It doesn't really do anything. So I can just write that as negative 8 minus, and then exponent, the exponent step is the same thing as taking the square root. So your first thing would be to take the square root of 4. And that gives you 2. So we have negative 8 minus 2. And then we combine those. We do that subtraction. Negative 8 minus 2 gives us negative 10. And so you are done evaluating when you have a number as your answer. So when you don't have any more symbols, you're just left with a number. Next one, we have x squared. So again, my x is negative. So I'm going to put parentheses around my negative 8. And then I have the square. Then it's plus 2. 2y means 2 times y. So if they're right next to each other like that, we're assuming multiplication. So that's 2 times, and then y is 4. So now order of operations is the exponent part, the negative 8 squared. So that means I'm doing negative 8 times negative 8, which will give me a positive 64. So I have 64 plus 2 times 4. Now, next in the order of operations, we have our multiplication. So that's 64 plus, then 2 times 4 is 8. And then our last step is to add those together and we get 72. And now we have a single number, so that's our answer. So you have just evaluated. Now the last one here. We have negative 2y, so that means negative 2 times y. Negative 2 times 4, because y is 4. Then minus z, and because z is negative, I'm going to put parentheses around that. So that is minus negative 1. So when we subtract a negative, that actually turns into uh, a positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rewrite that to plus 1. Because it just makes it a little easier to read rather than subtracting a negative. Now I can do my multiplication. Negative 2 times 4. So a negative times a positive is negative, and 2 times 4 is 8. So I'm going to get negative 8 plus 1. And then when you combine those, you get negative 7. So are there any questions on evaluate and what that means? OK. So next is the word simplify. So simplify is used if you are not going to get a number as your answer. Simplify means that your variables are not going to disappear. So that means you are not replacing the variables with numbers. You're working with the variables. And so what you do, you are combining like terms and you're still following the order of operations. And so basically to simplify, you just follow the order of operations and combine like terms as you, not your, you <laughs> go. So the order of operations applies not just to numbers, but we can apply it to variables as well. So it's still basically the same thing, working with the order of operations. It just means you're still going to have letters in your answer. So simplify the following expressions. So I have 5k minus 10k. 
So these are like terms because they both have the letter K. When we simplify, we follow the order of operations on the numbers. So if we ignore the variables for now, we'd have 5 minus 10. So we do that, but we just let the variable hang on. So 5 minus 10 is negative 5. So this will come out to negative 5K. So that variable just sort of hangs out there, and you'd follow the math on the numbers themselves. And then that's as far as we can go because we don't have any more addition or subtraction that we can do. You basically keep going until all you're left with is a single thing with a letter or you're left with addition and subtraction, but they're not like terms. Now the second example here, I have 2AB plus 5 plus 3AB minus 2. So if we look at the things with variables, 2AB and 3AB are like terms because they're both, they both have A, they both have B, and they both don't have any exponents on them. So when we combine those, we add the numbers, 2 plus 3. So that will give us 5, and then we just let the letters hang out, so that's 5AB. And then we have our numbers, 5 minus 2. So you want to read it as it is, 5 minus 2 there. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So then this will mean plus 3. And now 5AB and 3 are not like terms because the 3 doesn't have any letters. So that's as far as you go. So this is how simplifying is different from evaluating because sometimes you still end up things with plus and minus signs in there. It's just that you can't do anything else because you can't combine anything else. Now the third one here, we have negative two parentheses, four a plus three minus 14. So this is where you start using the distributive property. And so if we are following the order of operations, so again, I write it out here. We would be doing inside the parentheses. Now, inside the parentheses, we have 4a plus 3. Those are not like terms, so there's actually nothing we can do there. So that means the next step in the order of operations is multiplication, which is that distributive step. So what that means is you're taking the negative 2 and you're multiplying it by the 4a. So I'm going to just write that out. I usually do this in my head, but it's good to write it out. And then negative 2 times your 3. And then I have my minus 14. So when you have something in parentheses, whatever's outside gets multiplied by everything inside. So now I need to actually multiply. So the negative 2 times 4a, that's multiplication of the numbers, and then the letter hangs out, just like when we're adding, the letters hang out. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, and then I just have that A hang out there. Now I can also multiply the negative 2 times 3, so that's negative 6, and then I have minus 14. The nice thing about order of operations is if you recognize that things are in different terms, then you can do things at the same time. So rather than first doing negative 2 times 4a and then writing that down and, and the whole thing and then doing negative 2 times 3, I can do those in the same step because they are in two different terms. So that is the nice thing about knowing what terms mean and then recognizing that they're in different terms because then they're separate from each other and you can work them at the same time. So now I have negative 8a. And then everything else doesn't have an A. So if there's nothing I can add to that negative 8A. That's just going to hang out there. But I do have a negative 6 minus 14 that I can find. Negative 6 minus 14 is negative 20. So that's the same thing as just minus 20. So you can just write minus 20 there. And then when you're left with something with a variable and something without, that's basically as far as you can go. So when you're simplifying, you're either going to be left with something with a letter, something with a letter and a number, or something with just a number. There's basically three choices there, and that's how you know you are finished with the problem.
Are there any questions on, on this example or any of these three examples? So this is um, all I wanted to do for this session is just on variables and expressions, basically making sure you understand the terminology and what the words mean, because the words are telling you what to do. And that's one of the biggest things with math is a lot of people say they don't know what to do. And so you really have to pay attention to the words. And then once you know what the words mean, you know what to do. And then um, you just do the steps from there. Now, for your week two assignment, you're basically doing what we just did. So now with this lesson, you now have enough to do the week two assignment. Now, the week two assignment is a little more complicated because it's got one example with fractions, um, but the steps are the same. You just have to multiply fractions. Um, and then, and that's the second problem. The first problem has parentheses inside brackets um, but that works the same way as regular order of operations. You do inside out. So you do the inside parentheses first and multiply that out. And then once you simplify inside there, then you do the outside ones and multiply that out. And then you simplify. So you're still working inside out like the order of operations. So Amanda, I see you keep starting to type. Things, so I'm sure you have a question. <laughs> okay, you just feel more comfortable. Yeah, the words, I mean, the words are intimidating. But they really, I mean, they're, they really, they're not that bad once you know what they mean. They're just, they're just key words to tell you what to do. And that's the biggest thing. So, you know, if you're going through the class, maybe what you could do is just have a sheet of paper where you write down the words and then what it means. So that way you can go back later and say, oh, okay, it says simplify, this is what I'm supposed to do. Or, but, oh, it says evaluate, this is what I'm supposed to do. And that way you have like a cheat sheet of the vocabulary. Um, so that you know kind of what to do from there. And if you're struggling with fractions, I know, you know, week one, there's a whole section on fractions, but I know people are not very good with them. The calculator that I use, the TI-30, does fractions. And so if you have a calculator that does fractions, that will save you some time. Um, on this calculator, there's this uh, A, B, C button. That's the button you use to enter in fractions. If you have a different calculator, you, uh, you'll probably have to look up the manual to see if it does fractions or not. Um, but if you have a calculator that does fractions and you're not good with fractions, then I would recommend taking advantage of that. But I also recommend when you're showing your work, especially on the assignment, we, uh, the problem two where it has fractions, I recommend you still show your work of like building the common denominator because you will have to get a common denominator for there. And so I recommend you still show that work even if you use the calculator to do it for you. At least show that you know what the steps are. So do you guys have any other questions? Okay, Otis, if you have a question, because it says you, you raised your hand, um, if you expand the purple thing, or if you know how to turn on your microphone, you can also ask the question that way. Um, but there is a chat function that you can use. And from here, then the live sessions that I linked to in my announcement that I sent out today, um, those should make more sense now that you have some idea of what we're doing here too. That will help the solving make more sense and the properties make more sense. Okay, Otis, I don't see you writing anything. Um, Well, if you have more questions, you're welcome to email me or give me a call, at least today, <laughs> um, since I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Um, you can then, during tomorrow through Monday, if you have questions, 
then reach out to the guest instructor that will be covering for me while I am um, at the at the wedding. So, um, but if you have questions today, I'm going to be on my computer still finishing doing what I need to do before I leave tomorrow. So I will be available at least not through email and stuff like that today, and I will be working through there. All right. So. Um, yeah, I'm okay. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to stop the recording and then get everything set up so I can put this on YouTube and all that good stuff. So um, I hope you guys have a great weekend because I'm not going to talk to you again until I come back on Tuesday. So. <laughs>